Yeah, so let me give you a, a, a model, a four quadrant, magic quadrant model. I think that I'll start with the observation, cryptocurrencies mostly aren't currencies at all. Cryptocurrency is a misnomer and it creates massive confusion. And I think people in the space are confused. I think people out of the space are confused. Here's, here's the way I would segment the space. Four quadrants. You have digital property. Bitcoin is the king of digital property. It's, it's, um, it, it's optimized for integrity and durability over long periods of time. The idea is I want to take a million dollars, buy Bitcoin, and I want to hold it a hundred years, maybe a thousand years. Imagine owning a city block in London. Your family owns it 300 years ago. When would you ever sell it? Never. Do you want to sell it? No. How are you going to live? You're going to generate yield on it through rent by lending it out to someone else to build a building on, or you're going to finance it and you're going to borrow against it. How long can you do that? You can do that forever if you're actually a smart landlord. That's digital property. Digital currencies are Tether, DAI, Circle, uh, DM will be a digital currency, a CBDC. That's a digital asset that's seeking to be a stable currency and it's a medium of exchange. I mean, so this is not a subtle thing. I mean, it's, it, 8 billion people need a currency. The currency is the medium of exchange. The property is the store of value. Now, the third quad quadrant is, um, is a digital platform, Ethereum. It's a platform. <laughs> They want, they want to create a platform where you can create applications like a, a decentralized exchange, an insurance company, NFTs. When you buy, uh, when you buy ETH, you're buying a, an asset token, a digital asset that gives you a, a share in that digital platform. And then the fourth quadrant is digital or decentralized applications, Uniswap. Right? They're trying to replace NASDAQ or Coinbase or Bin Binance Smart Chain wants to replace Binance, a centralized exchange. <laughs> so here, the, I mean, looking at the picture behind you, Sven, I give your family a billion dollars and I say, you can either buy a billion dollars of land in London or you can buy a billion dollars worth of buildings in London or you can buy a billion dollars worth of the British pound, or you can buy a billion dollars worth of companies in those buildings. Okay. The British pound is the digital currency. The land is the digital property. The, the buildings are the digital platform. The companies are the digital applications. You understand the upside, the downside, and the risk profiles of each of those four. See the land will probably be here for 500 years, right? Absolutely. Right. The buildings probably got a useful life of 50 years to 100 years, Max. How about the companies? Name a company in London that's been around for 100 years. So that's the best way to understand the crypto economy, right? The digital currencies have to be compliant and compatible. They have regulatory risk. There's not a lot of upside to owning those, by the way. I think you can look at it from first principles. You can say, What's the most popular monetary asset in the world? The dollar. What's the second? The euro. What's the third? The third is Bitcoin. So, so of the top three, the only one that's going to go up in value as we print more money is Bitcoin. And, and then if I want to go find another scarce asset, everything else, Apple stock, Google stock, every other crypto is less popular. So. I'm looking at Bitcoin as uh, the most distributed, strongest brand of a monetary asset in the world. So if you're going to actually place a bet on a non-sovereign store of value, the dollar is not it, the euro is not it, Bitcoin is the first thing if we just look at distribution.